uh, good afternoon. I am happy to present my progress in my PhD thesis, uh, which is the treatment of acute ischemic stroke. I am Esra Jube. I'm a PhD student at the Department of Neuroscience at Semmelweis University. My vision is to make early treatment of stroke widely available and prevent disabilities among strong, uh, stroke patients. My mission is to make a meaningful impact on stroke prevention and treatment through innovative methods. These are my specific goals, which I aim to complete through the methodology of a systematic review and meta-analysis. My first project is investigating the predictive role of flare positivity in clinical out outcomes after intravenous thrombolysis in non-onset strokes. Th I started this project in September 2023. So according to the uh, report of Global Burden of Disease in 2019, there are 12.2 million incident cases of stroke per year and 101 million prevalent cases of stroke. Intravenous thrombolysis is the key treatment for stroke and the prevention of disability. Despite being beneficial, IVT can lead to hemorrhagic uh, transformation and therefore cause neurological deterioration. Magnetic resonance imaging and fluid attenuated inversion recovery, or FLARE, play a crucial role in uh, predicting clinical outcome after IVT. Moreover, FLARE might be useful in the, treatment, uh, in the prediction of uh, treatment and management of stroke patients. To give you an idea, this is what an MRI of the brain looks in an acute ischemic stroke. So in the, uh, immediately after the stroke uh, happens, you can see the lesion in the diffusion-weighted imaging because of the cytotoxic uh, edema. However, the lesion in the flare sequence appears later, usually after four to six hours, due to the disruption of the blood-brain barrier and the cause of vasogenic edema. So in the first imaging, you see no uh, flare hyper intensity despite a lesion in DVI. In the second, you see a subtle flare lesion, and in the third, there is a bright uh, flare hyperintensity, uh, which matches the lesion above in the DVI. So our aim is to evaluate flare uh, positivity, to evaluate fl uh, flare positivity that predicts worse clinical outcomes uh, in uh, non-onset non strokes. So our question is, does flare uh, Positivity predict work, uh, worse clinical outcomes among known uh, onset stroke patients who undergo IVT within the standard time window. Our population is stroke patients who undergo IVT within the standard time window. Our intervention is flare positive uh, lesions. Our comparison is flare negative lesions and our outcomes are clinical and radiological outcomes. Our, our hypothesis is that flare positivity is predictive of clinical outcomes in non-onset stroke patients who undergo IVT within the standard time window. If we are to prove our hypothesis, uh, our results will uh, help in the risk stratification for IVT candidates and will modify the treatment and management of stroke patients. We conducted a, systemi a systematic uh, search in three databases. And so far, we had almost 10,000 studies. After the uh, removal of duplicates, we had around 7,000 studies. We are still conducting the title and abstract uh, uh, selection. So we did register our study, uh, our protocol in Prospero, and we are working in title abstraction together with my co-investigator. Our second uh, study is comparing bridging therapy and endovascular treatment alone in basilar artery occlusion strokes. Basilar artery occlusion strokes are strokes uh, are associated with severe neurological impairment and the potential risk of fatality. Posterior circulation stroke due to basilar artery exhibit morbidity and mortality rates almost to 95% if left untreated as intravenous thrombolysis is, uh, uh, causes insufficient reperfusion rates alone, and vascular treatment is the most promising treatment for basilar artery occlusion strokes. However, recent evidences have shown that combining EV IVT with EVT results in higher perfusion rates. Our aim is to compare the clinical outcomes among basilar artery occlusion strokes, patients who undergo bridging therapy, and those who go EVT alone. 
So our clinical question is, does bridging therapy result in better outcomes than EBT alone among basal artery stroke patients? Our population is basal artery stroke patients. Our intervention is bridging therapy. Our comparison is EBT. Our outcomes are functional outcomes, symptomatic intracranial hemorrhage, and mortality rate. Our hypothesis is that the bridging therapy is superior to EBT alone in basal artery occlusion strokes. If we are to, uh, to prove our hypothesis, uh, our results will help in, will modify the treatment for stroke patients and will help in the, to decrease the mortality rate of the basal artery occlusion strokes. We conducted a preliminary research in a search in three databases. We so far found two meta-analyses which involved the same studies and 1,096 um, patients. However, there, are recent, there is a recent study involving 700 patients and there are ongoing RCTs which we hope will be published by the time we are working on this meta-analysis. Uh, moreover, this existing meta-analysis didn't find sig uh, significant uh, differences between these treatments. These are our uh, key articles, and uh, as you can see, they all have the similar outcomes, like fun functional outcome, uh, symptomatic intracranial hemorrhage, and mortality rate. We are still in the process of checking whether our topic is feasible. So far, these are uh, our projects, which we aim to complete by the next year. I want to thank you for your attention, and I want to end this presentation with my favorite quote. If the human brain were so simple that we could understand it, we would be so simple that we couldn't. Congratulations to your presentation. I would like to ask, in those patients with flare positivity, you mentioned that you will change the clinical practice. What else can we offer this patient than this, inter the, the, this intervention? Yeah, there is the only treatment for acute strokes, meaning in the first, uh, since for, uh, in the first 4.5 uh, hours, since the patient lost exhibited normal behavior or since the symptom onset, the only treatment is IVT thrombolysis. But what we can do to modify the treatment is that the treatment for stroke patient doesn't end with an IVT thrombolysis. There is a follow-up treatment after the IVT thrombolysis. So we can plan better. Um, we can know uh, which of the patients are high-risk patients, and we can plan better the ongoing treatment. For example, in the, it's a practice in the stroke patients after 24 hours to do a CT or MRI to do a checkup and see if there is a hemorrhagic uh, transformation of the stroke. But we also start with the anticoagulation and other medication, depending on the comorbidities of the patient. So by having this uh, certification of patient, knowing the high-risk ones, we can uh, do maybe a more detailed checkup, know which patients need more attention, where, when to plan the anticoagulation, usually with oral anticoagulants, where to, uh, when to plan it, or who needs it more and who doesn't. So. Thank you. Thank you. You have showed that uh, when someone has a, a stroke, the DVI shows nicely the penumbra. And I was always wondering, why do we see the flare positivity always around the ventricles? If it's a, if it's a vasogenic edema, mm -hmm. but we still see around the ventricular horns. Actually, it's not completely related to, to your presentation, but I have seen many flare uh, pictures, and that was always my question. So do you have, a, do you have an idea? Well, the circulation is mm, uh, mostly around, you mean the, in, around the ventricles we see the? Yeah, so, so, so like the DVI, you know, it's, uh, it, it highly depends where is the stroke, like where yes. is the territorial infarct. But like the, the flare, despite, for instance, it's on the right side around the middle cerebral artery, terminal branches, still on the left side around the ventricular horns, you see flare positivity. So, so you mean, despite the, we see the flare positive in the lesion, but also around the ventricles? Yeah, and that's, I don't know why. I know it, it leads far, but maybe Yeah, you, I mean, it should be something. due to the vascular distribution of, west, like the vessel distribution. That's why we, I don't know, so it, it's not, it's, it's I guess fine it's, if you don't know. It just, it's an interesting topic curious. to do a research. Okay, thank you.
I also have questions. Uh, so first of all, if looking at the pictures that you were showing, is really flare positivity or negativity enough to decide on this question? And, and also if I'm looking at the pictures, it's, uh, for me it's not like uh, positive or negative, it's like a, a, a spectrum, isn't it? Or is it like simply positive and you don't do it? Mm -hmm. um. In the studies that we want to involve in meta-analysis, the evaluation whether there is a flare positivity or negativity was done by two experienced stroke neurologists who did a blinded, let's say, review of this MRIs, and then on the undecided cases, they reviewed it together. Maybe it's not the perfect method, but it's the only one that we have until now and that we are using. Okay, so there are no other so that is the limitation of the study. Uh, linking, to, linking to Jakob's question, because maybe he was also thinking about that. What happens if, okay, you see that it's flare positive, but in the end it was not, and you, you were not performing the intervention to save the patient? Uh, we don't aim to do this study in order to do the IVT or not to do it. It's more of to do the certification for the follow-up, because the only treatment is the IVT, so we have to do it. It's not a strong reason to not to do it. And we do the IVT thrombolysis when there is a lesion in DVI, and even if it's not in flare, or it can be in flare, but there is a mismatch. Because if there is a mismatch, it shows there is penumbra, there is a salvageable uh, brain tissue. And if there is a match, then it's, it's possibly too late for the IVT. Okay, and just a quick question in two seconds, because the time is over, uh, regarding your second project. I don't know if you had the time to look into it, but it's a very good aim, actually, that there are previously two meta-analyses proving that, uh, or actually not proving that there is a difference between the two uh, interventions, but still you want to, to prove that there is. Uh, do you have any uh, idea what could have been the, the reason that there are no differences? That you, you, that you are so sure that you will that find. Should, okay. Um, the posterior, uh, posterior cerebral circulation strokes are not studied as good, as much as the anterior circulation stroke. So there is little evidence and also l uh, a little number of original studies studying, uh, doing this research. The limitation of two previous meta-analyses is because they covered a small number of patients. It was only 1,000. And um, we think that uh, we, if we involve more studies, more patients, we can have a more representable um, results. And the reason and the motivation behind it is because we have seen recently a meta-analysis with the larger number of patients published on the use of this therapy, like bridging therapy, IVT plus EVT in anterior stroke, um, anterior uh, cerebral circulation, and it had shown it has shown a superior. Uh, the bridging therapy has uh, proven to be superior to EVT alone. So we want to we we want to try and prove that is it should be also. Um, beneficial for posterior circulation, considering that it has almost 90% uh, rate of 90% um, rate of mortality. And also, if you do, uh, if you see in the physiological aspect, if we do an IVT before the EVT, it will help maybe in the reduce in the thrombus size, and it will make the reperfusion of the artery uh, more successful, and therefore decrease the mortality.